My name is Outsider2522 and welcome to another Eidolon video. So today we're going to be looking at World 6. It only just released. I've got some tips for you to help it be a little bit smoother transition into the new end game. Let's talk about it. Now before I say too much, I'm going to do my usual plug, which is the self promo. Apologies if you don't like it, but it works. Come join the Discord. We chat about things. I try and help. Other people try and help. It's a great little community. We're built there to just try and help others, okay? So if you do need assistance, or if you just want a cool place to hang out, maybe one of those fringe groups, come join us. Also remember to like, share, and subscribe. It helps the channel to grow. I am getting so close to the thousand um, subscriber limit that I've always been aiming for. I've got like 112 more to get or something. So if you can help me reach that limit, I would very much appreciate it. Another thing to ask before I get into the video. So at the beginning of every video, I do almost like an intro, it, saying my name, what the video is going to be about, that kind of thing. Do you care? Let me know in the comments below because I'm thinking of dropping the, my name is outside of 2522 because I just don't feel like it adds much to the video. However, if you guys do like it, let me know and I will keep it in. This channel's made for you after all, so your feedback is really, really needed. Okay, so let's talk about World 6. You've just killed Kruk, you've got a diamond, you can now open the portal. You step through the portal and you're introduced to a new tutorial. There are some important things to know. <clears throat> the first one is that you can soft lock your progression during this tutorial. So be very, very careful. I actually did it live on stream um, so people have seen how it can happen. All right. So the first thing I'm going to say is when you get into the sneaking tutorial, you will be given options of how to play. The first thing, you, and you'll be given two sands of time, okay? Sands of time let you rush forward six hours of sneaking, similar to previous items that you may have got. Now, the one thing I'm going to say is use the first sand of time to gain levels. With those levels, put one skill point into the ability to gain loot. <clears throat> you have to do this to get the nunchucks on the first level. Then move your ninja clone up to the first level and use the next sand of time. With a little bit of luck, you'll get your nunchucks and you'll be able to progress through the tutorial. If you don't do it this way and you use both sands of time to level up before you unlock the ability to gain loot, you will find yourself potentially having to wait an hour, two hours, three hours. And bear in mind at the beginning, your chance of getting items may be 3%. In six hours, you only have 18%. So you really, really need to be careful with the way you're playing it. And I really wouldn't make this mistake. I did. I've seen it, try to avoid it. The next thing I'm gonna say is make sure to do your pet battles as soon as you can. The reason is the new foods, uh, meals that are available are amazing. Okay, so Quick Slap just got a huge nerf done to it, which will drop your damage. However, there is a new meal that gives you a huge amount of damage as you level it up. Go get it. And the other thing is, when you're sneaking, one of the most important things you can do is get Jade Coins. You use them at the Jade Emporium. It's very, very important. There is a mill that will increase your Jade Coin generation massively. Mine went from 100 coins to over 1,000. Now, I do have a relatively high mill cooking speed, so you may not get as big a gains, but anything to help with that sneaking skill, because sneaking is probably the most important skill in World 6. Why is sneaking so important? The Jade Emporium. I just mentioned it a minute ago. You need to be unlocking as much as you can in the Jade Emporium. Why? Because the Jade Emporium has great stuff. Okay. Some of the ones which are just notable for me at the moment, I'm very, very new into it, but they're things like being able to remove your stat, your stamp under level bonuses, which means that instead of you needing to level up skills to get the best buff out of stamp, stamps, you no longer need to. So you're going to get a huge buff to your account. You also can unlock a beanstalk. With that, you can attach golden foods to it. If you attach golden foods to it, then you will get an, a buff, basically a universal buff equivalent of golden foods. This can be upgraded, so you can put even more golden foods in there. It seems like the Emporium is the new kind of meta. The quicker you can get through those bonuses, the better. So really, really focus on sneaking. If you've got spare gems, maybe consider buying the daily um, the daily pristine charms. Pristine charms do drop randomly in floors. According to Hot Air, there's about a one in 2,000 chance of one dropping. So 
very very slim you can buy these for gems also you can buy sands of time if you've got spare gems i recommend spending it there because sneaking is the one that is going to push your account so far forward another little tip for you is that some of the old shops have new stamps in them off the top of my head i believe there's two new stamps to get one for the forge one for your vendor okay by getting these stamps you will be able to increase the amount of um, ore that you can produce in an hour, which means if you're using Siege Breaker or Bowman, is it only on Siege? Maybe it's only on Siege Breaker. If you're using, anyway, if you're using your Siege Breaker class and you're candying um, spores, which a lot of people do to farm bars, you're going to be able to get more bars per hour. So this is a fantastic investment. The other one is going to give vendor more capacity. And what this means is for those things that normally you get one per day, you might be able to get up to two, three per day. This is a huge, huge increase on those time limited ones for things like time gated quests. So I highly recommend that. You're also gonna need the new Bob Joe that drops in World 6 store. The reason is there is a new death note that's available through the Jade Emporium and it works in a very, very peculiar way. Okay, next tip, buy as many of the new Bob Joes as possible. The reason is they scale. So the way that it works is the more Bob Joes in your inventory when you kill a mini boss after unlocking the mini boss death note the more mini boss kills it counts so if you kill a mini boss with one bob joe in your inventory it's one kill if you have a hundred bob joe in your inventory it's a hundred kills okay sorry he's not bob joe he's death joe i think anyway you need to farm them every single day they're actually important because they're going to help that death note and that death note gives you multi kill for all worlds it's a huge buff at the end of the day. And the final tip I've got for you comes around farming. Now, this is kind of two points, okay? As you progress through the day garden, you will reach certain points where you need certain produce, uh, we'll call them produce, to buy upgrades. Now, what you may want to do is go into your handy tools, okay, which are kind of items you automatically get, and you can lock plots. Now, what this does is if you lock a plot, it will never evolve. And this means if you do need to farm a particular produce to upgrade, you should probably lock that plot, get all your upgrades and then unlock it so it can evolve, all right? The other one in farming is do not sleep on your Insta grows. I believe as a base, you get two Insta grows per day for everyone that resets every single day and it does stack. You have to log in to claim them, similar to no bubble left behind. However, you can buy for premium currency more Insta grows Again, these are great because they're going to really, really help push that produce forward, push your meals forward, and get you through the game. The final tip I've got for you is you need to push with every single one of your characters. The reason is because Lava's added a new mechanic in here. So you'll first see it when you reach the seed one pins, I think they're called. And what it is, is that you basically cannot get through that map until you unlock it with a certain number of people. All right, you have to reach that map and get the kill amount with a certain number of people to be able to unlock it. These kind of locks appear throughout it. So there's another one at the leaks. I think it's for seven people. And I believe there's another one for nine people further on. I'm not past leaks yet because I'm still pushing. However, what this means is you need to be pushing with as many characters as you possibly can. It's going to be difficult if you don't have to. I do appreciate that. However, you're probably going to want to bring out Nobisect and things like that to try and push quicker because you can't just use one character to push through like you could in previous worlds. He's actually put like a, a a skill lock on things, which, while frustrating, I think is actually the right way to do it. So it kind of encourages people to make a more balanced account. Okay, they're just some of the tips I've got for you. Obviously, I will go in more detail into particular skills as we go further on. Um, I've already got things in the work for farming. I've been massively helped by uh, one of my guild mates, uh, Itsui. He's a fantastic player one of the best statue farmers in the game. I'm in close contact with him. We've been talking about where we're progressing, how we're getting further. So he's able to share a ton of information with me. Um, he's sneaking his way further than I am. All that kind of good stuff. So be a look out for that one. It's probably going to be farming next. Obviously, same as always. If you do have anything that you want to share, please feel free to leave a comment. Like, share and subscribe. It helps the channel to grow. Until next time, you've been amazing. Take care.